Welcome to Better Preparedness. Today in the program we're going to be looking at kids bikes. To know what types of tools you need to bring with you when you're going out riding or they're riding with you while you're running or something like that, you kind of have to know what will go wrong on the kid's bike and how will it go wrong. There's different ways of attaching things to bikes, either with bolts or allen wrenches and various things. So we're going to look at four very different styles of bikes and hopefully all of these components on the bikes cover what you have in your household. So stay tuned on Better Preparedness. Two other bikes to look at before we get to this one. We're going to start off with a run bike, kick bike, whatever you call this in your country. Fantastic for kids to learn skills, for learning balance. The style of bike, of kick bike, may or may not have inflated tires. This one does. We have another one, an old one that had solid tires. So the nice thing about the solid tires is that you can't really have a puncture. These ones you could. You have to make sure you have a pump at home that can pump these up because they're a little bit finicky in this one. There's really not much of a gap, so it's going to be pretty hard to get a, a pump head on that one. But when you look at what could really go wrong in this bike, well, if you looked it over a little bit before they went out for their ride, well, you'll notice if there's anything really obviously loose and a problem. But on this one, an adjustable wrench will help you remove the tires, the wheels, if you have to, I guess, if you needed to re repair a puncture. But the odds are these things are so light, you'll probably just carry it home and fix it wherever it is you are. But maybe you're out uh, and your child covers quite a long distance, so you can. But to get these wheels off, you need a wrench to adjust the seat post. And if there's a bit of play, too much play, well, you need an adjustable, or I'm sorry, a multi-tool Allen wrench. But really not too much that can go wrong on these bikes. And that's one of the beauties of them. Next up, We're going to go with the Mega Force here. Now, this is a step up in style of bike. You see, you have a crank. This is the crank. You have the drivetrain and the chain. But in terms of the brakes, there are no hand brakes, so to say. And so there's no, there are no cables or wires on this bike. The brake that it has is a coaster brake, which means you pedal backwards, and that's how you stop. So. Right off the bat, you see with this bike, there are no cables. It's a fairly simple, there's, no, there's only one gear, so to say. There's only one chain combination. And for the question, I guess, of what do you need to bring with you? Well, first of all, make sure you have, you check the pressure before the kid rides, and you can still have punctures on these bikes. And the bigger the kid, the further they start to go distances. So the further you can end up having to carry the bike, uh, if, if there's a puncture. Now, it can start to become a good idea if you're biking with your child uh, that you have what you need with you so you can repair this style of bike. Conversely, you could always put a seat pouch on here and uh, mount a little pump somehow, although they don't have as many attachment points. But the key thing is the, further, the bigger the bike, the bigger the kid, the further they can go. Uh, you'd be quite surprised how far kids can ride these bikes. This one did come with training wheels, and that had an extra uh, nut here. So that can get loose if you hit a bump, if you have a pothole. And so those are important things to remember of how if your child depends on those training wheels, you want to make sure you can straighten them out. For the majority of this bike, really, it comes down to an adjustable wrench. Uh, the headset, if it gets loose, you can tighten it to a degree manually, enough to hopefully get you home safely. The wheels, let's get in here zoom in here. The wheels, you'll see you'll need a wrench to uh, remove that. And let's see if the, the stem becomes loose, uh, the adjustable wrench will take care of that. Now the finicky thing with these styles of bikes, and often the cheaper the bike, the more simple uh, and a sort of old school, so to say. But to remove this back wheel, if you wanted to repair a puncture, you need a Phillips screwdriver and then the wrench to hold the, the nut at the back because you have to undo this before you can undo the axle uh, nuts here. 
to remove the wheel. So keep in mind what it is you're going to need for this bike. Again, we're talking pretty simple bike. Now we're going to move up to a bigger style of bike. So let's put the Mega Force aside for the moment. And we'll get also these kids bikes can end up weighing a fair bit. So now what we look at is on this bike, we have a variety of things that make it a little bit more complicated. You have cable activated brakes, you have a cable activated gear, you have only shifting and gears at the back. You don't have multiple chain rings up front. So the question is, how is this bike likely to go wrong? Well, if we look at what's to potentially go wrong, are the brakes, uh, are rim brakes. That means they squeeze uh, brake pads onto the rim. If they hit a pothole or they jump off something and bend the rim a bit, it, it may be tough to get that wheel through the brakes. So you may be you know, left with no choice but to you know, loosen the brake if you have a little bit of play here, but you may have to release the cable if that's the only way, but keep in mind, you've got a lot less braking. This one has handbrakes front and back, so you could get away to a degree with only the one brake. But when we look at what can go wrong in this bike, and we consider the multi-tool that has all the Allen wrenches and the adjustable wrench, well, this bike still requires, because this is an older bike, uh, inexpensive, but this one still requires a lot of the adjustable wrench to for the, the brake cable, the brake pads, the gear cable, this, fray, this cable's all frayed. Let's see, to remove the wheels, fortunately, because it's not a coaster brake, you don't have that slightly annoying lever that you have to unmount on the non-drive side, but you still need an adjustable wrench to remove this wheel. So it's, it's kind of finicky if you want to take it on and off for putting it into a car. That's where the quick release style of wheels is really better. Now, these bikes, of course, prone to flats. So you may be in, you know, you may really want to consider having with you, let's see here, we have a, the appropriate size inner tube. We have patch kit, tire levers, and as soon as you're dealing with a bike that has air-filled tires, which is the overwhelming majority of them, then a mini pump, I always call these a get-me-home pump. Please, please don't use this as your standard pump. It really is just a get-me-home pump. What you want to be using for most bikes, for your bikes, you really want to have a floor pump with a good quality gauge. Most of these floor pumps can handle the two main styles of valves. One Schrader, one's Presta. You'll get to know how that, how those work. But you know, the dial gives you the air pressure, and the pressure is generally marked on your tires. That gives you a ballpark, and you can, you know, over time, learn how to how to adjust those. So, for this one, overwhelmingly, you still need the adjustable wrench. And now, pretty sophisticated bike. Before I get onto this bike though, one of the things I want to emphasize is if you check the tire pressure, every, if you check the pressure on your tires with a squeeze, I really don't like that as the primary way of testing your pressure because you can really not know what the pressure is by squeezing it. You might know if it's flat or not, but you need to use the, uh, the gauge on your floor pump to know and you'll help prevent so many punctures and the wear and tear and the premature aging on the tire by having the tires at the correct pressure. But then also, periodically, especially if it gets grimy and dirty, but every so often, wash your bike with warm water and dish soap. That's my preferred way. And by going over the bike with your sponges, you'll see are there any broken spokes? Are the brake pads worn like we saw on that other bike that had rim brakes? where you can easily see if the brake pads are worn out or if there's a frayed cable, maybe you need to do some work. But there's no substitution for also lubing the drivetrain that allows it to run more smoothly and your child will be able to bike faster with less effort. So let's get on to this bike. This bike is a huge jump up, but it's also important because more and more people 
uh, have some quality bikes for their kids uh, as well. Now, this style of mountain bike uses a variety of systems. It has a suspension fork. There's not really much you can do to repair a suspension fork if it goes wrong on, out on the trail. This one is a hardtail frame, so to say. That means there's no suspension on the rear. But if we look over this bike and we see just what is it that will likely go wrong and what kind of tools do you need, one of the nice things about it is that on this style, on this particular bike, there's hardly anything that still requires an adjustable wrench. Actually, there's nothing. And that's nice because these things get a bit bulky and they're a little bit hard to fit. But sometimes you can end up finding a multi-head wrench. Just make sure it has all the sizes you need so you're not left without the one you need. All right, on this bike, the multi-tool that has all the Allen wrench sizes, generally they're in metric, and you'll have even the Phillips, a flathead. And when do you need these? Well, you might need these for various screws that still are on bikes, for the gears, the high and low screws uh, still require a Phillips screw. But if you look over most of this bike, it is overwhelmingly used with an Allen wrench set or it has quick release like this one. You just pop this to remove the seat post or lower it or raise it. On the wheel attachments, you have a quick release as well. So again, you can take on and off this wheel in a fraction of time that would normally be taken to, to remove the, the wheel. So look the bike over, see what it is you need, and that way you can plan ahead. Because on this bike, for example, we always have a pump and quite often we have the seat pouch mounted under here. That way we have the spare tire, uh, spare tube for this particular size of wheel and the correct valve. We also have multi-tool, the tire levers, patch kit. That way if my son goes riding with me or with another person, he's equipped. Now so if he doesn't know how to repair something, then somebody else can help him. But as long as he has the tools and they're in the, the kit, required for that, he should be able to then get back on the road. Because if you don't have the, the gear with you, there's not too much you can do to repair. So thanks a lot. Make sure you look over your bike, the bikes you have, and if it's gonna be you just biking and having the tools, well then you need to have the both sets of tools with you on the bike so that you can do the repairs. Again, try to prevent these things by, uh, from happening by looking over the bike, checking over the tire pressure before you go out for your ride, but then secondly, be equipped and knowledgeable and learn. There's lots of great videos on to just about how to repair everything on a bike these days. Educate yourself as to how you do those repairs. Be equipped. Try to prevent them. And you'll have a lot more fun out on your bike and be a lot safer. Thanks a lot. Please click that like button. Subscribe. We'll get a lot more videos and content, not just on cycling, but a lot of other important areas in preparedness that should really come in handy. But please, share these videos, really helps me, and click that like button.